as the world awaits more updates on the health and condition of Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin, the incident brings to mind another really scary moment from 1998 involving Hockey Hall of Famer Chris Pronger. It was during this play in one of that year's Stanley Cup Finals games that Pronger got hit in the chest with a slap shot. He stood up and attempted to skate it off before collapsing on the ice, mm. momentarily losing consciousness after experiencing a form of cardiac arrest. Pronger would recover from the injury, going on to play in his next in his team's very next game and another 13 years in the NHL. And Chris Pronger joins us now. It's great to have you uh, with us you. for a number of reasons. For a, num for a number of reasons. <laughs> but, but, you know, Chris, what's so frightening is the parallels between what happened to you and what we saw in the football field where you got up, started to try to skate, and then immediately Boom. collapsed. Tell us, tell us uh, what, what, what you can remember of that time. Yeah, I just, as you saw in the video, I went out to block the shot. It hit me square in the heart. Uh, I had a little red welt right over top of that area on my chest. Uh, it stung. I lost my breath a little bit. I corralled the puck, wanted to get a whistle, and then uh, I blacked out on the ice. But in, in my head, I was telling myself to get to the bench. And uh, I woke up 20, 30 seconds later looking up at uh, Joe Lewis Arena rafters and staring at all the retired numbers and banners up up there and and saw people hovered over top of me and i glanced over to the right and saw our bench and guys were crying and teared up and uh <laughs> i really didn't know what was going on it uh it was pretty surreal so wow. so what, what what kind of uh what, what what kind of help did you get how quickly did you get it uh, they were out there pretty fast, as you saw. Uh, a couple players came over and, and uh, training staff and, and uh, the doctors got out there. Uh, they cut my jersey off and, you know, everything was splayed wide open. Um, I did not lose. I lost consciousness, but I didn't stop breathing. Uh, that's mm -hmm. that's probably the biggest difference in these two cases. Um, and, and got back in the ambulance. My parents were at the game as well, so they got oh. to witness all of that. Um, and, and then just went to the hospital, stayed overnight and, uh, flew back to St. Louis, uh, the next afternoon and met with a heart specialist and started kind of walking through, uh, some stress tests and, and different things to kind of check, uh, to see if there were any issues with my heart. I wore a heart monitor for 24 hours. Uh, went back the next morning, got checked out. Uh, she gave me a, a clean bill of health and, uh, I went down to the rink the next morning and, and did warm up and felt good and played that night. Wow. So when did you, how long after this happened, did you, were you told what happened? And, and are we correct in saying it was a form of cardiac arrest? What exactly happened? It was, it, it was commotio cordis. So what happened was uh, my heart was in between beats when the puck hit me. So my, mm -hmm. my heart thought it beat. So in that one instance, oh. that, that one heartbeat that didn't happen, uh, there's that much oxygen going through your body, and, and that's what uh, caused me to pass out. And uh, and my heart never stopped beating; it just re restarted itself and, and kept kept going after that. But uh, basically, missed one heartbeat, and that's that's why I passed out. Hey, Chris. Good morning, uh, Jonathan Lemire. There's some theories. That's what well, you just described there. That condition is what happened to Demar Hamlin, too. And of course, we don't know exactly yet. But my question to you, and we know that his situation. Um, far more uh, tended to be graver uh, than yours. Um, were there any concerns you had about resuming your playing career? Like with uh, DeMar, what happened to you is something that happens in every game. He takes a hit for you, a puck. Defensemen block pucks all the time. Um, this was a freak accident. Did you have any concern about resuming your career that something like that could happen again? Yeah, no, that was one of the questions that I had for the doctor as we walked through you know, all the, uh, you know, the Q&A after I went through all the testing and stress testing and she read all the data from my heart monitor and looked for any abnormalities or, or blips in, in my heart rate. Uh, everything checked out. She gave me a clean bill of health and, and basically told me this for the sequence of events for this to actually happen. It's like winning the lottery. Um, as we as we now know, this hasn't happened in hockey since 25 years later, uh, this particular incident. Uh, commotio cordis that is happens a lot in Little League Baseball when, when pitchers get a line drive hit back at him and it hits him in the heart. 
Uh, unfortunately for them, they're not as as fully developed and physically mature, and and a lot of them unfortunately pass away. So, uh, it, it's it's not uh, a very good cardiac moment and event. But uh, um, you know, I think the biggest difference between myself and Demar is is that he lo- he was not breathing, and they had to paddle him and, and obviously give him a lot of CPR uh, for a number of minutes, and that and that's the most concerning part. All right. Chris Pronger, thank you so much for uh, sharing your story with us. We appreciate your coming on the show this morning. Thank you. Thanks so much.